Ladies and gentlemen, Chris of the Polish Geek welcomes you to the final game in my underrated video game marathon. And this game is the first Templar. And this game is simply... Gives you praise to this deep emotion. Yep. Wonderful game, and you've almost certainly never heard about it because this is one of those very low budget, not known video games, even though I think a lot of love and passion was put into it. But again, you've almost certainly never heard of this game. I mean, and even if you look on YouTube, there's like barely much about it like I mean if you start digging you most certainly will find something but generally this is like one of those video games that I think even most dedica dedica dedicated gamers likely haven't heard about but I think it truly is a wonderful amazing underrated video game about Knights Templar kind of like Knights of the Temple Infernal Crusade before it although without, although it's much more grounded, without the supernatural elements. This is basically like Kingdom of Heaven in the form of a video game. And by the way, I actually did a whole you should be watching for Kingdom of Heaven. Maybe check it out, it's actually in the video description. And, but also there is some elements of the Holy Grail thrown in. Yes, that Holy Grail from Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. So, the first Templar is an awesome Templar game and now my final game in the underrated video games marathon I think that one of the many reasons this game's existence is completely unknown is because objectively not only it looks very dated but it was actually made back in 2009 but ob objectively even in that time, it actually didn't look particularly great and already pretty dated. But again, very small budget. It was also made around similar time as the first Assassin's Creed came out, which certainly wasn't helping matters, because another medieval game came out, and in contrast to the first Templar, Assassin's Creed not only made money, but it spawned an admittedly pretty fantastic franchise that I love, while... The first Templar was completely forgotten, or more likely, not even noticed in the first place. But story-wise, at least, I actually very much prefer the first Templar over the very first Assassin's Creed game. Maybe not necessarily more from the other Assassin's Creed games, some of my favorite ones, but I certainly love it a lot more from the first one. And Assassins do even make an appearance as enemies at some point in the game, although they are called Hesachines, which is closer to how they were actually called in their native language. In fact, because there seems to be so many things in common with the first Assassin's Creed, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the first Templar was actually made as a response to an Assassin's Creed game, since both Assassins and Templars are actually far closer to how they were in history in contrast to how they are in Assassin's Creed. And I think Kellyan is a much better protagonist than Altair, for example. The ending even is similar to the first Assassin's Creed, but no spoilers and enough Assassin's Creed comparisons. I do love the story of the first Templar. The story is about a young knight Templar, Kellyan, who is looking for the Holy Grail. Characters are great, besides Kellyan, there is also Kellyan's best friend Roland, as well as a woman named Mary de Ibelin and all the characters in the game are pretty well written and engaging and I really love playing as Kellyan. The story is basically Kingdom of Heaven meets Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The game has very similar themes to Kingdom of Heaven and same time period and setting, but also there is uncovering plenty of Templar lore and looking for the Holy Grail. Yep, amazing story and there is actually a very interesting twist at the end that very much changes perspective on, of the game but I won't spoil, spoil it. It is one of those things that it's really awesome when you experience it for yourself and in similar vein to Knights of the Temple Infernal Crusade you as Kellyan do travel to the Holy Land and fight Saracens. Again, days when people weren't so sensitive. 
Though, just like in Kingdom of Heaven, the conflict isn't strictly black and white. In fact, the actual main villains of the game are the leaders of the Inquisition who torture anyone whom they accuse of heresy. And those guys are Inquisitor Isaiah as well as an evil priest, Father Lorenzo. Although, these guys are definitely evil. Plus, there is even a significant historical event in this game when King Philip IV accused the Templars of heresy and, start, and started carrying out mass executions of them, including Grand Master Jacques de Molay. And this really did happen, because King Philip IV was very fe fearful of the Templars and, as I just said, he started out carrying mass executions of them and that included the last known Templar Grandmaster Jacques de Molay. Really fascinating history that I suggest you study. Though, that's not who the Grandmaster is in the game, it's actually his predecessor, William de Bougeon. Those events are not directly depicted on screen, actually, but they are very much happening in the background and have huge effect on the story. It is God's will that the two of you continue this journey together. And there is also so much Christian lore and history here, mostly involving the Knights Templar, of course, but there is also a lot of Christian lore, lore in general. And as you play a game, you uncover various tablets that describe historical events that really did happen in Knight Templar history, as well as plenty of historical Knight Templar code. At my behest, and with the approval of the Patriarch of Jerusalem, I hereby bless the existence of the Order of the Knights Templar. They are to receive white robes signifying purity. On them, proudly, a red cross should be affixed to symbolize the sacrifice they are prepared to make. Gameplay of this game is pretty simple and I enjoy it a lot. It's clear that the game is very low budget and yet Clearly the creators had a lot of passion and love and they wanted to do and they wanted to put as much detail as possible with ultra small budget that they had. In this game, you follow Kellyan on his journey to find the Holy Grail and discover mysteries of the Templar Order. And it's also clear that the game was made to be co-op and yet it wonderfully can play as a single player game very easily. Because always with Kellyan. He always has a partner. At first it is his friend Roland and later this woman named Marie de Ibelin for most of the game. You generally can switch back and forth the characters. There is also a skill tree where you choose abilities and upgrade your character to make them stronger. You can do it to both Kellyan and Marie de Ibelin actually. You actually have to upgrade your skills separately and in order to heal yourself, in a very similar fashion to Knights of the Temple Infernal Crusade, you use prayer for that, which makes perfect sense in the context of the game. Village Miller. God rest. Level design is also quite good. In fact, I gotta say, as the game progresses, it actually gets better and better. You start the game in Cyprus and then you go to Europe where most of the story happens, specifically France, natural. That's where the Templars are mostly in and the plenty of European levels and landscapes range from European forests to medieval towns and castles as well as a swamp. And as I already said before, you also go to the Holy Land like a Knights of the Temple Infernal Crusade before it. And I already said it and I think it's clear how with the low budget a lot of love and passion was put into this game, which is certainly not something I can say for vast majority of the modern video games. There is also enemy variety too, there are Saracens and there are French Knights in the service of King Philip and there are even other Templars. Plus, there are some interesting boss battles as well. There is this deformed human nicknamed Beast, there is leader of Saracens and his gold armor and of course there is an aforementioned Inquisitor Isaiah. There are more but I won't spoil, especially the final one. <laughs> Lost that is dead. Good Although I just said 
I very much have no problems with the gameplay, I really like it, but at the same time, objectively, gameplay and graphics of this game can also be considered its biggest flaws and what I think can be a big drawback to a lot of people. As I just said, I personally enjoyed the gameplay and didn't really have problems with it, but I know that this is not the type of gameplay that appeals to everybody. In fact, it doesn't appeal to a lot of people. The best comparison I think I can use is the very first Witcher game, which gameplay and look-wise has also aged pretty badly. I still adore the first Witcher and it's one of my favorites, but there are plenty of people who very much call for the remake. I understand where they are coming from. I'm personally wary of the remake because the story itself is actually magnificent, one of the best stories in, told ever in video games, so unless you can have passionate people that truly care for the story, I would rather just leave the game alone. But objectively, the looks of Witcher 1 have aged pretty badly and the gameplay also is not the best for some people. And while I personally don't have much problem with them and still very much adore the game, they are very much an acquired taste that plenty of people won't really acquire. And the first Templar is exactly something like that. It very much looks like The Witcher 1 and somewhat plays like it, although I say the combat is actually somewhat better than in The Witcher. It's much more simple and they are certainly a lot easier to control your character and to hit your enemies. And I like how sometimes in combat you can see how Killian defeats enemies in slow motion, kind of like in Skyrim. So if you're like me and don't mind the oldness of Witcher 1, plus you love Templars and medieval history, then I think the first Templar is very much a game for you. But if you want new graphics and more fluid accessible gameplay, then I think the first Templar might not really be a game for you. Again, I don't think the gameplay is bad. It's actually quite good with the limited budget, it just might not appeal to everyone. Still, I do think it is at least well worth a try, because once you look past the graphics and some gameplay mechanics that you might not enjoy, this game truly has a fantastic story and a rich Templar lore taken right out of history books. Amen. Grandmaster. Killian. It warms my heart to see you. I also have one personal nitpick with the game. This isn't really objectively the flow, more like a nitpick from someone like me who loves history. But the Grandmaster of the Templar Order is dressed like a Knight Hospitaller with a black robe and a white cross on it. And that's decidedly not how Templars dress, that's how Knights Hospitallers dressed. Templars on the other hand were famously dressed in white robes and red crosses. And really, the only Templar Knight in the game who's actually dressed like that is Killian's best friend, Roland. Like, vast majority even of the, temp of the regular Templars you meet, they generally actually wear the reverse with a red robe and a white cross. Oh well, this is a nitpick ultimately that does really have effect on the game and its story. In Kingdom of Heaven, Reynald de Chatillon and Guy de Lusignan wore Templar armors too, despite the fact that they were in Templars and in real history, they very much wouldn't be allowed to wear it. Those are elements that you really just need Grand to look past. The first Templar is an awesome game, and I think that despite the outdated graphics and maybe some gameplay mechanics that might not appeal to everyone, I truly think the first Templar is a work of passion. It is very obvious that the game has a very low budget, but the people who made it clearly had so much love for, for what they are doing, because the game still very much manages to be an awesome game with a really amazing story, fascinating characters, fascinating Templar lore and Christian history, and while that is subjective, I still think the actual gameplay is pretty good and balanced. Because as I just said, many modern video games have a very high budget, but not much heart. The first Templar has very low budget, but, clear, but clearly it's full of heart and passion. Grandmaster, I'm glad to find you here. We must speak. Brother Kellyan, you bring us hope. Do you have it? I truly love the first Templar. 
It's an awesome game with a brilliant story that suddenly was held back by a very low budget and a diff and another medieval game coming out at the same time with a much higher budget. But I think if you can get past admittedly outdated graphics and maybe some gameplay mechanics, then I think it truly is a wonderful game. And if you and if you are looking for a awesome Templar game, then I think the first Templar very much is it. Or Knights of the Temple Infernal Crusade. I think both are amazing if you want a truly good Templar game. As I already said in the beginning, this is very much Kingdom of Heaven, the video game, with very similar themes and, and a similar setting, but with different characters. But I even say it actually has a pretty similar message to Kingdom of Heaven, which I really love. Holiness is in right action and courage on behalf of those who cannot defend themselves. And if you where do you where can you get the first Templar? Well, just like Knights of the Temple Infernal Crusade, it is on Steam, so it shouldn't be very hard to get. But ladies and gentlemen, this is my last review of my free underrated video games marathon. I all three of those video games are literally some of my favorite video games of all time. Truly amazing hidden gems and Thank you all of you for checking out this video, press the like button, please subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you soon in a movie review. Talk to you then, bye!